Hello, my name is Jerry Meyer. I'm the Nebraska National Guard historian. Welcome to the National Day of Prayer presentation here at the Nebraska National Guard Museum in Seward, Nebraska. We're proud to host this event today virtually. Uh, we hope you enjoy it. It's got some great music and some great presentations by our state chaplain. So uh, without further ado, thank you for uh, joining us today. Day of Prayer here in Seward, Nebraska. We are so glad that you can join us online. We have many of our local pastors who will be sharing in prayer with you, as well as our special guest today. On behalf of the Seward Ministerial Association, we're glad that you can join us. I want to tell you a bit about our ministerial. It does include all of our churches in Seward County, and we try to be very ecumenical in times of fellowship, worship during the year. We do host the annual crop walk in Seward County, and we also take part in mission work together. So it truly is a wonderful joy to have all of the churches in Seward County as part of this. Today is considered to be the National Day of Prayer. It's hosted every year on the first Thursday in May, and we have always celebrated in Seward County at noon, usually with a lunch. So we invite you to pull up your lunch today and join us as we pray. We're glad you're here with us. Today you are in for a real treat. Our guest musicians today are Megan Meyer and her mother Mary Meyer, and they will be sharing with you two different pieces, one entitled In His Presence, and the second, It Is Well. 
We thank them for sharing in their musical gifts today, and Mary will also be playing some other musical pieces during our prayer time. Our guest speaker today will be Chaplain Philip Hauser, and he's with the Nebraska National Guard, and he is joining us via video as well today. And we are so glad that he could be a part of our National Day of Prayer celebration. I'm sure you that you will learn a little bit more about what it means to be a chaplain and what it means to be a chaplain in the Guard in Nebraska. I invite you to join me in an opening prayer today. Dear sweet and holy Jesus, we thank you for a national day that reminds us to stop wherever we are and to pray, to pray for your people. We thank you, Lord, for the people in our nation, in our state, in our town, and in our world. Lord, might you hear our prayers today as we come to you with various concerns and joys on our heart. We thank you, Lord, for time to worship and time to pray together. It's in your sweet and holy name we pray and say together. Amen. I'm Chaplain Philip Hauser coming to you from my office in the Joint Force Headquarters of the Nebraska National Guard here in Lincoln. It is a privilege for me to be with you via technology in these uh, days of COVID-19 self-distancing. I'm glad nonetheless to be able to be with you and very honored and pleased to serve with the men and women of the Nebraska National Guard. I have been asked to present to you a, a brief kind of overview of uh, chaplaincy ministry in the uh, National Guard. It is indeed my privilege to be able uh, to do so. The National Guard, as some of you may know, is the oldest branch, if you will, of the military in the United States. We uh, trace our beginning back to 1636 when the colony of Massachusetts uh, instituted a militia for the protection of its citizens. So we uh, trace our, our uh, uh, origins back quite uh, a few years. Here in Nebraska, 
In the Army National Guard, we have seven chaplains uh, who are serving in our ranks. We have uh, 10 what we call religious support personnel. Those are enlisted folks who are trained, specially trained, uh, to serve within the chaplain corps uh, within the Army. We have 10 of those folks helping us out. And then we have two what's called chaplain candidates. These are students who are still in seminary, not yet ordained, uh, but are serving alongside the full chaplains and the religious support personnel. And then in the uh, Nebraska Air National Guard over at the 155th Air Refueling Wing here in Lincoln, we have uh, six people serving, three chaplains and three religious support uh, personnel. The mission for the chaplaincy in the military, certainly in the uh, Nebraska National Guard, is really threefold. The first is religious support. That is just what you might think. Uh, rights and practices. All of the chaplains come from various endorsing agents, faith groups, faith communities. We all of us have varying theological uh, perspectives and practices. We serve a, a very widely diverse uh, community in, in the military and in the Nebraska Army and Air National Guard, some uh, Roman Catholic, some Protestant, uh, and the like. We all of us uh, offer uh, services according to our endorsers' um, uh, directives, Mass in the case of Roman Catholics and uh, Protestant service in the case of uh, the Protestants. So uh, religious support in that way. The second uh, is that we assist commanders to ensure the uh, free exercise of religion because we do serve in a very diverse uh, community. It is imperative that we uh, protect everyone's right to the free exercise of religion. And then finally, we uh, provide um, spiritual, moral, and ethical leadership. We uh, advise commanders on those various issues. Um, the basic unit of service in uh, the military, certainly in Nebraska National Guard as well, is what's called the UMT or the Unit Ministry Team consisting of one chaplain and one religious support personnel. So uh, whether they're in a unit or in um, one of the squadrons of uh, the wing, we serve together chaplain and uh, chaplain assistants, sometimes they're called uh, but the new term is religious support uh, personnel. The, uh, as I've said before, the history of the uh, chaplain corps really dates uh, back a long way. Uh, the chaplain, course is, chaplain corps is the second oldest corps uh, in the army. We date back to the colonial days, not quite as far back as uh, the National Guard, uh, but certainly to the days of the Revolution when George Washington called for the creation of a uh, chaplain corps. And since that time, there have been, as you might imagine, many thousands of people who have served faithfully in the chaplain corps, doing what God has called them to do in uniform. Uh, in the case of the National Guard, citizen soldiers who preach for a living, uh, whatever the uh, congregation or faith community they come from, uh, traditionally they are part-time uh, guardsmen, soldiers, and so they serve uh, the congregations and parishes and uh, synagogues and the like. I'd like to touch on uh, uh, several, though, uh, outstanding examples of selfless service in the history of uh, the Army Guard. The first is uh, a group of four chaplains from World War II, uh, very celebrated, as you might imagine, uh, individuals who gave their lives uh, to save the lives of uh, their fellow soldiers. These are what we call the four chaplains, and there is actually a memorial uh, to them. These four chaplains, one Roman Catholic priest, one Jewish rabbi, and two uh, Protestant chaplains were sailing from the United States to England in the early days of the war on a troop ship, the SS Dorchester, when in the middle of the night a U-boat torpedoed in the North Atlantic, the Dorchester, and uh, the ship began to sink. It did ultimately sink, 
Before it sank, though, these four brave chaplains gave up their life jackets. Uh, all of them gave up their life jackets to a fellow soldiers who had no life jacket on the Dorchester and saved the lives, certainly of those of those four. They gave their lives in service to their to their nation, and they are very celebrated, and they really embody what we uh, strive for in uh, the military as chaplains. And then also is, there is um, Father a Chaplain Father Emil Capon. He was taken prisoner by the North Koreans uh, in the early days of the Korean conflict. He was taken to a POW camp, very brutal conditions. He served selflessly, giving up his blanket, giving up uh, food, uh, and caring for um, the, his fellow captives. He refused to be uh, released when he was offered opportunity to be released uh, if he would but uh, do favors for the enemy. And so he died in captivity. He was ultimately awarded the Medal of Honor for his heroic action uh, in the POW camp. And he is also the embodiment of what it means, of what we strive to be uh, in the uh, Nebraska National Guard and the military uh, as a whole. There really are three when it comes to um, what we do, uh, the nuts and bolts of what we do. There really are three things that we uh, strive to always be doing. The first is nurture the living, as you might imagine. We don't put any kind of artificial limitations on what that means. Those around us in uniform, uh, the living, uh, who are serving with us. We always want to nurture their welfare, their spiritual welfare, to be sure, as chaplains, first and foremost, but not exclusively. We uh, provide for uh, many different ways in which we nurture the living. Marriage care is uh, one of them. Suicide prevention is another one of them. Resiliency training is a third. And there are uh, many other ways in which we chaplains seek to nurture the living. The second way is care for the wounded, because after all, uh, we in the military do train uh, for missions that we never want to employ for combat or other dangerous circumstances. And people, when they serve their nation in that way, uh, do uh, get wounded. Uh, tragically, they suffer the effects of uh, combat or other circumstances. And so when they are wounded, we always want to be there serving their needs in hospitals, at VA centers, uh, in treatment centers, and, and the like, wherever it may be. Even if they're in uniform and serving while they're wounded, we certainly want to uh, care for them. And then finally, honor the dead. Uh, it is the sacred uh, obligation, opportunity, uh, for uh, us to serve those who have given uh, their, uh, their all uh, to, in service to the nation. People do ultimately uh, die, and so when they do and they have served our nation honorably, we always want to go that, uh, that ultimate step, that last step to, to serve them through a funeral, say, for instance, uh, that is uh, directed uh, by their family with military honors. We work closely with the military honor guard, as many of you may have seen. Uh, in your civilian ministries, the honor guard uh, comes out and we always uh, provide for that. So finally, I'd like to just visit with you a little bit about the basis for the Chaplain Corps. The Chaplain Corps' basis is found in the Bill of Rights, our Constitution, the First Amendment of the Constitution guaranteeing the freedom of religion. Since uh, folks who are in uniform are unable uh, to be a uh, typically, uh, especially when they're deployed, when they're unable to be uh, with their civilian spiritual providers, we have been authorized by virtue of the Constitution, the First Amendment to the Constitution, uh, to provide for them in far-flung fields and locations. And so that is really the basis for uh, the Chaplain Corps in law, the First Amendment to the Constitution. Finally, though, I'd like in the time I have left to speak to you about what that means a little bit. What it means is that we, chaplains, 
serve together as a unit. We like to talk about one team, one fight. That is true for everybody in the Nebraska National Guard, wherever they serve and with whomever they serve, doing whatever they're doing. But it is certainly true that one team, one fight unification uh, in the chaplain corps. Uh, we do not all come from the same church body. We do not all come from the same denomination. Uh, we don't even come from the same parts of the state. Yet we serve together in what we call cooperation without compromise. Every chaplain is endorsed by an endorsing agent. You can't serve as a chaplain, no matter who you are, without an endorsing agent. That endorsing agent has directives that must be followed. I mean, as an example, Catholic priests say Catholic Mass for the Catholic uh, soldiers and airmen, of course, as directed by their endorsing agent, and uh, likewise, other church bodies as well. So we serve one another in that way, Com um, a cooperation without compromise. If uh, a Roman Catholic service member uh, needs, wants Mass, uh, I can't provide that for them as a Protestant, but I am obligated and it is my highest joy to see to it that a Roman Catholic priest is ultimately available for them. That's what we mean when we say cooperation without uh, compromise. So that brings me to the end of the time that I have to be with you on this event. Um, it has been a privilege to be with you, albeit to, via the technology. I'm thrilled to have been asked. I pray God's richest blessings on each and every one of you. And like many of you, I am looking forward to the day when I'm able to get a haircut again. I can see that day coming, and so I will rejoice when that day takes place. With that, I will simply say, thank you very much for what you do. God be with you. Thanks. Today we will lift up our military in all the different forms that people serve both in active duty and in inactive duty and who have previously served. Let us pray. Your sweet and holy Jesus, we lift up to you those who are in active duty who serve in many places and areas around our world, Lord. We lift up to you those who have served at any point in time and Pray over each of them and for their families. Lord, today we especially lift up to you those who serve in the Air Force. Might they know your hope and love. We lift up to you, Lord, those who serve in the Army. Might they know your hope and your love. We lift up to you, Lord, those who serve in the Coast Guard. Might they know your hope and your love. We lift up to you those who serve in the Marine Corps. Might they know your hope and your love. Lord, we lift up to you those who serve in the Navy. Might they know your hope and your love. We lift up to you those who serve in the Space Force. Might they know your hope and your love. We lift up to you, Lord, those who serve in our National Guard. Might they know your hope and your love. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the way that you watch over each and every one of us. And we thank you for those who serve in our military. Might they all know your hope and your love. It's in your name we pray and say together. Amen.
It's a joy to join you today on this National Day of Prayer. I'm Scott Bruick at the Ministry of St. John, and today we pray for those in health care, public health, and also our first responders. Let us pray. Gracious Lord of creation and life, we come to you this day seeking your wisdom, strength, guidance, and care for all who serve in the vocations of medicine and public health. Give them all that is needed at this time so that they may serve the patients in clinics, hospitals, care centers, and communities. Provide them also the time of rest that they may step away from their duties to be renewed and refreshed in order that they may continue to serve well for the sake of all entrusted to them. Father, we also lift before you those who serve as first responders in our communities. Bless all who go when the call comes in and the alarm is sounded, the police and the sheriffs, the medics and the firefighters. Grant them wisdom as they enter a scene to provide the help that is needed. Grant them protection from all that could harm them as they serve those in need. And we pray also that you'd be with the families of all who serve in these voca vocations, that they too would be protected from all harm as their loved ones come back home to rest. This we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who responded to our greatest need at the cross and brought healing to our sin-sickened lives. In his name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning. I'm Father Tucker, and I'm at St. Vincent de Paul Catholic Church here in Seward. I'm honored to be here and to pray with all of you today. Let us pray for government leaders of our country, of our state, and our local community. Gracious God, our elected and appointed officials are in their position from the choices your people make. We pray for the wisdom to use the rights and privilege to vote in a responsible manner so we may have the best people guiding our country, states, and communities. The opportunity, the authority they have ultimately comes from you, and we ask you to give them a desire to serve and a genuine love for all people in their care. God, help them to have a love for the rich and the poor, for every racial group and of every creed, and for the strong and the weak. Help them to work for truth and justice so their decisions will be correct. May their decisions help all persons protect our natural resources, promote peace and justice, so that our homeland may be a good place to live and that your goodness may touch the entire world. The earth is full of the glory of God with an immensity of glory as the waters cover the seas. May the resurrected Christ bring life and love to the entire world. Amen. Administrative Pastor at Hillcrest Evangelical Free Church here in town. It's my privilege today to be able to lead us in talking to our Heavenly Father and to do so on behalf of the students of our community and the surrounding area. Would you just bow with me and let's pray for them right now. Heavenly Father, 
you've asked us to come to you in dependence and in faith and with boldness. And it's to you we come because you love like no other being. You care like no other being. And you have more power and authority than any other being. You have designed each one of us, each student, with value and purpose. You are at work in us and in the entire world to bring yourself glory and to bring us authentic and eternal life. Lord, today for the young, for the students, for those who are strong, we pray that you give them the necessary caution to keep from unnecessarily giving the disease to others. We pray that you would inspire them to help those around them. All's not lost, but many things are and will continue to change, and so it seems uncertain. Father, help us to keep our focus and our love for you intact while these circumstances around us continue to morph and change. Father, for the grade school, the middle school, the high school, and university students whose courses of study are changing, whose placements or internships uh, are canceled, whose graduation process is uncertain, whose jobs are uncertain. God, show them that while life is uncertain, you are a person who will never leave them or forsake them. As we place our trust in you, you will show yourself faithful. God, we trust that you are good and that you do good. And so we want you to teach us to be your faithful people in this time of change. Help us to follow in the footsteps of your son and our faithful shepherd, Jesus Christ, who laid down his life for us and created all kinds of positive change. May we follow in those footsteps and may you glorify his name as you give us everything we need to do your will. God, give wisdom, direction, and guidance to these young people. We ask this in your son's name. That's Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thank you so much for praying with me. At this time, we join together with Christians everywhere as we say the Lord's Prayer as he has taught each and every one of us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I share this petition for prayer for our community and for the churches of Seward County. And this is shared by Pastor Greg Gabriel at Faith Lutheran Church. Please pray. In you, O Lord, the churches of Seward County take refuge. Do not let us ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver the people of this county. Incline your ear to our neighbors and friends. Rescue us speedily. Be a rock of refuge for us, a strong fortress to save us. You indeed are our rock and our fortress. For your name's sake, lead us and guide us. Take us out of the net that is hidden for us, for you are our refuge. Into your hand we commit our spirit. You have redeemed us, O Lord, faithful God. The fortunes of this community are in your hand. Deliver us from the hand of enemies and persecutors and viruses. Let your face shine upon your servants here in Seward County. Save us in your steadfast love. It's in your name we pray and say together. Amen. And that prayer was an adaptation of Psalm 31, verses 1 through 5, and 15 through 16.
On behalf of the Seward Ministerial, I thank you. I forgot to introduce earlier, my name is Pastor Joella Nagstam, and I'm the chair of the ministerial and one of the pastors at Seward United Methodist Church. We thank all of our pastors who have helped us to lead in prayer today. We thank our chaplain, Philip Hauser. We thank Jerry at the National Guard Museum. We thank Megan and Mary Meyer. And of course, we thank Wes, who has helped us with all of our video and technology today. And most of all, I thank you. I thank you for joining us as a community and helping us to pray together during this time. So will you join me in our closing prayer? Dear Lord, we just thank you for the many ways that you invite us to gather together as your people. We thank you, Lord, for technology, which helps us to gather across the distance. We thank you, Lord, for our community, for our pastors, for our churches. We pray a blessing over the coming days, and we pray that as we continue to walk a healthful journey, that you will guide and direct in all ways. It's in your holy and precious name we pray and say together, amen. Thank you for joining us.